Oh, it's another update video. What, what could I have possibly done now? Well, uh, nothing really. I mean, everything has been running awesomely. I really enjoy the 3950X. It's made productivity so much better. So editing and rendering videos is light speeds faster than it was on my 7700K. But when I was making that video, well, not only did I run into some issues, if you haven't seen that video, go, go check it out because uh, it was a bit funny. But I also noticed a problem with my graphics card's water block, the Hydro X from Corsair. Yeah, the block isn't too good. If you haven't seen that video, I really recommend going watching it um, and share it with everybody you can uh, think of because if we want that design to get fixed, we have to get the word out. But one person that did see that video and was willing to send me a bunch of parts to help me fix my system just to ensure that nothing gets bricked in here was EK. So shout out to EK for uh, helping me out because if not, I was just gonna have to run with it and hope that it didn't turn into a leak down the road. But they sent a care package. So now we're gonna look at that today. We're gonna upgrade this system again to an EK system and we'll even compare temperatures because I did run this a stress test uh, for 45 minutes to see if it heat soaked the loop. It did, um, spoilers. But we'll see if the EK system is able to dissipate that heat any more efficiently than the Corsair. But most importantly, it's not gonna leak on us. Before we actually, before I bring all the parts over here and show what we're gonna be swapping out today, let's, let me just, if you haven't seen that video and you're not gonna go back and watch it, can't be bothered, let me show you what's going on with this uh, GP water block, just in case if you have one or you're thinking about getting one, you can see what it actually does or has the potential to do and you'll probably change your mind. So I've rebooted the system, I've unplugged my riser cable and I've unplugged the power from my graphics card just, just to keep anything from getting broken. Uh, when it does leak, the only thing down here at the bottom is a couple fans, so shouldn't be an issue. So this is my 2080 Ti. It's got a Hydro X water block on it, uh, XG7, I believe. And as you see at the top here, you got two bolts that fasten this manifold on there. And that's where the problem is. Keep your eye right here. When I put a little back pressure on this, you're going to notice it starts to leak. Okay, it leaked a lot more than I thought it was going to. But essentially, that's the problem. And if you have a Corsair Hydro X water block, you have this problem. Um, essentially, you're okay as long as you do not put any pressure this way or this way on your, uh, your manifold. But say you have a real tight cable run or whatnot, if you just move it a little bit, it's, it's all over. So we're going to take all this out and it's going to become EK because that is just unacceptable. Uh, so that was a bit aggressive. It actually has never, never leaked that bad. So you can see why we're going to swap all this out. So let's take a look at what everything Corsair has sent over for this project and uh, we'll get going because there's quite a bit of stuff. So here it all is. Uh, we got a new water block. Most importantly, this is the, so basically everything here is from their Quantum series. So this is a vector for the 2080 Ti. Must have as you, uh, as you've seen earlier. New pump, so this pump has RGB, which is a big improvement over the one I got, so that's awesome. New back plate. We got some of these, uh, so they're, they're new fittings. They sent over a bunch of fittings, and their new fittings have these little rings you can you put in there to add a little bit of accent. They're actually quite cool. I'll show you those when we get down to that, that road there. They sent over some of their new Vardar fans. So these are actually pretty sweet looking. They have a real nice industrial look to them with these, uh, basically these, sound dampening edges or bumpers on here. They look really cool. Um, if you remember EK's older Vardar fans, they perform very well and now they just look twice as cool. So that's pretty awesome. We're gonna be swapping the, the CPU block out to a mono block made specifically for the X570 Aorus Master motherboard. So that'll be interesting. Never really used a mono block before, but I know it looks sweet. Uh, putting it on there shouldn't be a big issue. We'll find out, hopefully it won't break nothing. Got a bunch of fittings, and of course, a new 360 millimeter radiator to replace the Corsair Rad. Now, there's nothing really wrong with the Corsair Rad, but EK sent it over, so we're gonna put it in there just to compare the systems, and maybe if I get a case that's a little larger down the road, I'll run two 360s to help cool the system down even more. But that's the plan, so I guess the first thing to do, well, obviously drain the loop, which is Kind of a bummer because I don't have a, a drain port, which I will be installing on this new loop. We're going to leave it as soft tubing for now because I have a nice 3D printed um, 
project coming up, and then eventually after that, maybe we'll move to hardline tubing. So the first thing we need to do is get the loop drained. I won't bore you with that, and then we're gonna start work on the GPU. We'll put that block on first, then we'll move on to uh, the CPU monoblock, and we'll see how it looks when it's all said and done. So now that we got the block out, I was really surprised at all that build up in there, considering that I'm using deionized water and, you know, an additive to, well, it's supposed to stop growth, but as you see it, it's, it doesn't look like it's doing the case. But anyway, let's look at this block from EK and compare it to what we got here. So, so like I said, this is the quantum, EK quantum vector for the 2080 Ti. Uh, mine's essentially the EVGA black edition. Thermal pads and hardware. There's our block. Now the biggest thing to note on this block versus the Hydro X block is the top manifold. As you see here, one, two, three, three mounting screws. There's not gonna be any issue with leaking on this block. It's all acrylic, RGB on the top and the sides here. So it should look good. Now we just gotta get it installed. All right, so let's take a break from the montage there and just look at the block comparison. So right here we have the course there, water block, and I actually have no issues with this. This is not giving me any issues. It's never had any leaking problems like the other ones, but we're gonna switch it out and we're gonna go to the CK mono block, which is a bit bigger. So let's just have a look-see real quick. Pretty, it's very hefty. So obviously we gotta remove the board stock VRM coolers to use this because this is now gonna cool our CPU and VRMs. And you can see it's made for the X570 Aorus Master, which is the board I have. Now, I don't know, I've never installed a monoblock, so this is gonna be interesting. I can't really find any good videos about it, so we're gonna have to look at the manual, kind of figure it out ourselves. Let me get all this stuff put away and we'll get going here. Okay, step one, find said directions. Boom. So first I gotta remove this armor, which is a kind of a bummer. So this one, the one that we already took out, and that one appear to be the IO cover. So we'll do that first. Uh -huh. We got another one right here. This is a standoff and a screw. It's probably be easier if I use just a socket for it rather than goof around with the you know, nose pliers. Haha, -ha, yes it is. Let's hope I can remember where everything goes. Alright, so that is off. I'll plug this little. RGB cable, got it. So all you guys, don't you move. Let's keep that there. Now, will you come off here? 
pretty please. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's off. All right, all right. Let's see, now what? Oh no, it's thermal pad time. Ah, oh, they're different thicknesses. Curses. So we got a two mil. That guy. Looks like we have maybe two. Nope. We've got a one and a half and a one. So one mil pads going here and here. Just double check here. Kidoki. Kidoki. Now you want one five across the top of these, not these, and then one five across these and these, and it wants two mils, like, I don't know where, there's no, the, the things that it's pointing to for two mils does not exist. See what our block looks like. Okay, so I can see there's a step there, they machined a step in that, and that's a horrible place for a quality assurance sticker. Mr. Inspector. Oh, why would you do that? Bummer. So essentially it looks like we want one five here, and then two mil here, because we got a step there, so. That's the plan. As soon as I get this quality assurance sticker out of here. I think we got that right. Oh my God, it's another quality sticker. Right there. Who? Who is it? I want names. I mean, that one's an actual important part. Mr. Quality Assurance Man or lady, whoever you are, you monster. Beautiful application of thermal compound, if I do say so myself. One problem. Can, I, can you come back off, please? Thank you. So, these can be seen, which is not a huge deal, but I don't know if I can handle that, so I gotta trim these down a little bit. Much better. It's so heavy. All right, flip it over. So there's what it looks like after you get the cover back on there. Obviously, you no longer use that screw. So you have uh, just the three in the bottom, but it doesn't look too bad. And it wasn't too tough to put on, as long as it works.
So it's actually the next day. I've, I always underestimate how long it takes to do things like this, but it's all together and I have to say that I'm pretty, pretty happy with how it turned out. And that's not the best part. So before I took everything apart, I did run, you know, a benchmark. I run, ran Ida64, a CPU and GPU stress test for 45 minutes just to see how hot the loop got. And then I was putting this together. I'm like, why am I going to run that test again? It's a custom loop versus custom loop. Is the temperature really going to be that different? And well, surprisingly it was. So I ran that same test, Ida64, same setup, 3950X, 2080Ti. Uh, GPU and CPU are slightly overclocked as well. Same, just like they were before, 45 minutes. And this time around, the temperatures were lower. So our first go around on the Hydro X, 45 minutes, room temperature 23.8. Uh, the temperature of the CPU after the test was right at the thermal limit. So the thermal limit of my 3950X is 95 degrees Celsius. And that's where it was, just pegged off of that. Average frequency during that run was 3870 and the GPU reached 70 degrees Celsius. Now, after this new loop was put on there, the new EK loop, temperatures were a bit different. Room temperatures, 22.3. Average temperature, or basically the temperature at the end of the run was 84 degrees, so we dropped like 11 degrees, and our average frequency was 4,007 megahertz. So we bumped up our frequency average as well, not to mention our GPU was now running at 52 degrees Celsius. One thing I did forget to check though, uh, was the VR, VRAM temperatures. So during that same test with the mono block, the VRAM was reporting a temperature of 49 degrees Celsius. I wish I would have thought about that before I took the stock VRAM cooler off to see what it runs or ran in its stock configuration. So if you have an Oris X570 master motherboard and you know your uh, VRAM temperatures on Ida64, let me know what they are down below. Just curious, because I forgot to test those when I initially did that. But the biggest thing is this does not leak anymore. So that is, what I really was setting out to do and why EK sent this over was peace of mind knowing that I'm not gonna turn this on one day and brick my whole system because if you remember when I wiggled that fitting at the beginning of this video, if I would have pulled that backwards, that would have shot that liquid rather, rather than out right onto my motherboard since I have a vertically mounted motherboard, which would have been a bummer. So at least it won't break now. And I still got soft line tubing. I have a plan for that in a future video that involves my 3D printer. So make sure you guys get subscribed for that. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. And if you haven't seen the video on my Hydro X GX7, I believe it's called, where is it at? XG7 water block and it's leaking situation. Make sure you go check that out. Send that to everybody you know that has one or is thinking about buying that, C or that GPU block because it is a big deal in my eyes. And I think if I would have known that before I bought that block, I probably would have just bought this one. Till next time.